Hello, my name is Alex Ross. I'm the music critic of The New Yorker and the author of the books The Rest is Noise, Listen to This, and Wagnerism. I'm delighted to be taking part once again in the Thomas Mann House's uh, Mutually Mann uh, Reading Initiative. And the piece uh, that we are looking at this week, Germany and the Germans, uh, is an exceptionally important one. I think one of Mann's most important political utterances and also one of his most important personal utterances. And the great lesson that Mann taught uh, in his work and life is that there is never a clear line between the personal and the political, and it is dangerous even to attempt to draw such a line and to create a purely aesthetic sphere. Something that I immediately think about looking um, at the title is Mann's employment of the Germans um, as a catch-all category. Uh, and it is a bit troubling, and perhaps deliberately troubling on Mann's part, to speak uh, about a group of people, uh, especially a very large group of people, um, as a fixed generality. Uh, I think each of us who belongs to such a collective would instinctively rebel uh, against, uh, 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 say, the Americans uh, being uh, uh, discussed um, as, as, a, as a group from which uh, there seems to be no one individual who can claim uh, exclusion. Um, and uh, it is the same with uh, the Germans. I think it is, in many cases, a phrase to avoid. Um, and I think when we talk about German history, uh, we have a tendency to, to speak of the Germans as a unit uh, in a way that um, betrays uh, the complexity of that history um, and has a certain dehumanizing effect. But I think Mann is being deliberate about this because, of course, it is, quote unquote, the Germans uh, who have subjected the rest of the world and their own population uh, to such a dehumanization at the time of Thomas Mann's writing. Um, and there is an aspect to this piece where he is going up to a line uh, in generalizing about German character and German history, uh, a line uh, past which um, many of his readers, especially his German readers, um, uh, uh, will find deeply troubling uh, and perhaps indeed infuriating. And uh, this essay uh, had an infuriating, uh, infuriating effect um, on uh, German readers at the time, notably Bertolt Brecht, uh, who thought that um, uh, Mann was attempting to impose a kind of mass guilt uh, on the German people. But that is not what he is doing, even though he does speak very broadly about German history, uh, going back to the time of Martin Luther, uh, finding these, these traits in uh, uh, German history that seem to uh, um, uh, rebel against ideas of civilization, of liberal thought uh, that carve out a special identity uh, for the nation and for its culture and forces that can be and have been uh, joined to military uh, aggression, uh, to a kind of cultural aggression as well, um, and that culminated in the Second World War. But then comes a great turn in the latter part of the essay, in which Mann, first of all, brings himself into this collective, the Germans. He says, it is all within me. I have been through it all. Uh, and thereby he recognizes with remarkable candor uh, his own reactionary tendencies, especially when he was younger, uh, his uh, belligerent rhetoric during the First World War, um, his hostility to democratic strains uh, at times, um, his grandiose uh, romanticized vision of German character and German soul. Um, and that remarkable uh, a sentence, I have been through it all, I think connects with his essay from the late 1930s, um, uh, which is variously known as uh, a brother uh, or a brother Hitler, uh, where he finds common traits between himself and Adolf Hitler, 
uh, and especially this this early life as a directionless esthete, uh, someone with grandiose dreams. So I've been through it all. Such a powerful uh, formulation. And then he goes on to say, there are not two Germanies, a good one and a bad one, but only one whose best turned into evil through devilish cunning. What he means by devilish cunning uh, is, of course, uh, somewhat unclear and brings us into the train of his great Faustian novel, uh, uh, Dr. Faustus. But it is a mechanism about which he does not wish to be too specific, uh, I think. This idea that something went terribly wrong in German history, uh, we will never be able to explain it fully, but it is what happens uh, to such national collectives. It is a paradigm of the tragedy of human life, uh, he says. And so I think he's talking about more than Germany and the Germans here. He is talking about the tendencies of nations to bring out both the best and the worst of their constituents, uh, of their population. It is somehow a necessary division that we make uh, among the world peoples. Uh, but it is one, of course, that has time and again uh, created uh, vast uh, destruction um, and indeed has brought about uh, self-destruction uh, on the part of those nations who, who uh, um, uh, identify themselves, um, uh, especially in a mode of supremacy over others. And this is where uh, the American lesson becomes clear, because since 1945, it is America that has been on the special path. Uh, it is America that has uh, won uh, uh, an extraordinary position of world domination, uh, or at least held such a position until uh, uh, recently. Um, and it is our task uh, as Americans to ask ourselves such questions, not to create this clean dividing line between the good America and the bad America, uh, but to say, it is all within me. Uh, I have been through it all. There is only one America. Um, and this is the path uh, toward a deeper understanding of American history. Um, and Thomas Mann gives us such a powerful model for this national self-examination, one that we so often do not wish to engage in because we do not see ourselves uh, as part of this fixed collective. We see the divisions within our society, within our nation. We do not see it whole. But Thomas Mann had the ability to step all the way back and to see it whole in all its complexity. Uh, and it is for that reason, I think, that this essay is such an important one and one that we should always be rereading with our own contemporary world and our own contemporary experience in mind. Thank you very much.